All right, guys. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this fine planet. Thank you for joining today. Happy Wednesday in this um, Artist Anonymous session. So usually what we'll do in the Artist Anonymous session is we will just go over the, the 12 points that I, that I like to discuss, just uh, get our brains working. But I'm actually going to hold off on that one today, just because I feel like we got so much to cover. Today, we're going to be talking about AI, <laughs> you know, and, and what it, you know, and just have a discussion about it, because I think it's very important just to get a better understanding of it. I think it's better just to have our opinions about it, share our thoughts about it, and, and see where it takes us. And I have some opinion. Oops, sorry, I'm going to shut the door here. I have, um, I definitely have some opinions about it uh, that I want to share and uh, we can, and I also want to just share examples uh, just for everyone to see as well. Again, you may already be uh, involved in this. You may have a great understanding of it. You may have been listening to podcasts already about it, but this is a great way again, just for us as a community at Silver Join Academy, just to talk about it as well. Talk about it in the open because we can always learn something new. Uh, my, my initial feeling just generally, I, I wrote some things down by my initial attitude of it is in all honesty is we have to embrace this is not to be afraid of this, not to run from it, not to poo-poo it, not to maybe be all for it, right? There's, uh, we're all going to have our different takes on it, but it's all going to come down to how you choose as an artist to really use it and embrace this uh, for yourself. I know there is going to be casualties of war. It's absolutely going to happen. There's going to be businesses who are going to see as this keeps getting better and better, the technology and use it, and they will start limiting some of their teams. Uh, but also there's going to be companies that are going to be hiring more artists because of it. There's always, we're going to find a balance in this. Um, the, the biggest thing where I see it potentially taking people's jobs in all honesty, just knowing the production system, imagine Studio A, has uh, typically, maybe they hire, maybe it's a gaming studio, maybe they hire eight artists right now to do concept designs and come up with ideas and we need the creativity and we need you to flush these things out, right? To where, what it will be able to do at some point, I, I truly believe it, they'll get to the point where there's going to be more skeleton screw, uh, crew aspects going on to where now a studio can say, listen, we need to cut down on production costs. We need to do this. We're going to generate. We know that we want to design a certain asset and they can create that asset through AI, multiple variations. And there's going to be some bugs and the colors aren't going to be perfect and things are going to happen. But now we can just take either the art director or we can take these other few artists, just maybe two or three artists to fix all these th hundreds of designs we have. That's going to come. That's going to happen. There's going to be people who are going to be doing unethical things with it. There's going to be people who are going to be um, trying to mimic other people's artwork and start businesses and just say, I'm going to uh, just create. Let's just you, I'm just going to use this name because I've seen it done pretty well already with Pascal Campion. I've seen his work mimicked where you probably couldn't tell if it was a Pascal Campion, but some people, an unethical business can say, I'm going to create these new images and now they're mine because AI created them. I, I'm the inventor of the prompt, right? It's all going to be the, the inventor of the prompt where, mark my words, people are going to start selling their prompts as well. That's going to come down. It's going to, you want that image? I'm going to sell you that prompt. And people are going to make, people are going to come up with so many different ideas and businesses. But that entrepreneur, that businessman who has nothing to do with art, doesn't care about art, doesn't care about 
the industry, doesn't care about screwing people, is going to say, I'm going to create a line of prints or make bookcase or, or make um, luggage and put images on the luggage of this sort of style. And they'll create businesses and the general public will not know the difference. And that's where we got to step back a bit and realize the general public is not going to have a great awareness about this. They are not going to be able to tell the difference. It's not going to matter to them. I've, I've been involved in many situations way before AI where it just, again, even an artist's name, it doesn't matter. Who cares if you got this artist or that artist? Some people really care. They got to have that artist. Now, are you going to be able to take someone else's image and create a, let's just say, a good friend of mine, Bobby Chu. You're going to take him and create a Bobby Chu image. I have an example. You're going to show that. Are you going to go on Instagram and just claim that this is yours? Who's going to buy into that? And if people do, they it, it doesn't even matter because it's still not the real Bobby Chu. And I just think that everyone's going to go, oh, it looks just like Bobby Chu's artwork. So there's, if you're well-known, in that area, I can see where it's going to, um, people are going to use you as an influence, right? It's going, it's, it's going to help in that sense, but you're not ever going to pass it off necessarily as your own. And I know there's artists who have talked about what if we can ask these companies to eliminate our name out of the whole algorithm aspect. So you can't even put in you know, our name, a specific famous artist's name to where it's just taken out of the picture. Um, so, but again, so very interesting aspects, but I do just want to tell you again, so, some of my thoughts. I want you to think about Canva. I want you to think about that program Canva, what that did to the graphic design industry. All right. It's like the graphic design industry is not that it's dead, not that people aren't getting work and there's still those people who are thriving as graphic designers. But when you talk about what it used to be and all of a sudden now you have this AI intelligence, really everything's AI. And look at all the different platforms it's being used for. Again, we are not escaping this. We are in it now. I, I was talking to a, a CEO of, a, of one of the largest cancer research hospitals in uh in america who's a who's a friend of mine actually lives uh in this area where i live and i was asking him, how's ai affecting your business what's it doing he was telling me all these amazing things ai is going to be doing for the health system right so there's there's a lot of things happening um but i want you to think about canva and what that did to where all these people again they don't doesn't matter. Are they trying to find the best graphic designer or are they just trying to find uh, a system that will auto generate something for them that they can use to sell their real estate, to market their tire store, to market their grocery store, their pet supply, food chain, whatever it is, they're using this now. And it killed a lot of graphic designer jobs. That's where I see, yeah, this will kill jobs, but it's not going to it's not going to be the end of artists by any means. It's going to be a way just to, to help us. I just want to share some ideas, okay? People selling NFTs, right? There's people who are very smart in the NFT world who truly understand that, who aren't artists, who look who was making NFTs. A lot of times who were doing it successfully were companies who are finding artists and marketing them NFTs because and the artists themselves maybe weren't as savvy. Some were, some weren't. But to able to generate this whole NFT market to where someone, if they want to move into that area, they can start that, right? Just a uh, uh, regular Joe can go and start his own NFTs and create any sort of artwork, fantasy, go create, you know, do whatever they want. Okay, so that that's going to happen. All right. I think about the poster business. I think about when you go to Target or Walmart and you see posters and it just might be of a horse face or it might be of a of a figure drawing or it just might be of a Albert Einstein or something. Who knows? Or it could be a pumpkin. It could be anything, right? Just for seasonal where these companies are going to go, why do we need to hire these artists, again, because people aren't buying those prints usually for the name of the artist. They're just buying them just to fill up uh, their bathroom, decorate their bathroom, decorate their living room. Will those companies start to use this system more often? Absolutely, they're going to. Is it going to kill that business for artists? No, there's still going to be that area. But I'm just throwing these out there, okay? Um, 
So just uh, what would I talk about? Like just art prints, just in general licensing, where just think about bed sheets or curtains, creating prints and creating a brand new design, a brand new. I was uh, Julie uh, was kind enough to have been sending me some stuff. She sent me one on a TED talk about someone creating brand new insects and brand new creatures right that have never been thought of before in this way and and using it for these purposes but basically you're creating ownership at, at that sense and you might be an entrepreneur and go i'm gonna make a bunch of bed sheets out of these and i'm gonna make a bunch of this out of them again this is going to be an entrepreneur's world um it, it kind of is uh let me see i i just wrote now artists who are entrepreneurial um, you know, can can start even creating things. I mean, you're going to see it on, on T-shirts, everything. Book publishers, small press are going to go, eh, do I need to pay that artist $3,000 for that book cover? Or could I just type in atmospheric background with uh, a menacing figure in front, not even put an artist name in there and just generate something, right? Without having an actual artist look, yeah, that's gonna um, come happen. There's gonna be, like I mentioned, independent studios where small ones, where they're gonna cut down to skeleton crews and realize that they can use this uh, to their advantage, all right? Uh, the toy industry will create some interesting toys. The fashion industry is going to be creating some things. Um, but, all, but what I want to say is do not stop because this is happening. There, What you can do as an artist, what, what I do feel is you're going to be able to use this technology right now. Because when you are getting jobs, you know, you can use it right now to help spawn ideas. And I think that's going to be one of the greatest areas that this is going to help artists. All those ideas, all those artists that are sitting there that are feeling unhappy, unmotivated, don't have any ideas, don't know what to kind of draw, don't know what to work on. You could generate an AI image that is so abstract that push launches you. I can tell you since I've just dove, in, dove into this just a couple of weeks ago when I was introduced to it, I would say that this has triggered something in me that has inspired me to draw even more and just new ideas. It does, it will, it will do this for you. So again, don't resist it. Don't fight it. We are not going to be able to stop the people who are going to use it for unethical practices. And you, if you do, you know, I think you're, you're ruining it for yourself. It's my own personal opinion on this, but I want to say what you should do is number one, you as an artist should never stop improving because there is always the artist within you. This is never going away. You are always got to keep working towards improving yourself. You got to create your own intellectual properties. This is going to open new ideas and just spawn an idea where you might have been thinking about something where how am I going to even start with that? And AI in some fashion can launch you into this area. Uh, you got to keep showing up at conventions and meeting people. Again, these are things you got to keep doing for yourself. You got to keep trying to get your foot in the door because, again, there, there's going to be those limitations. There's going to be those things that are, even though your prompt may be amazing, you're still going to have to, it's still going to need that artist touch for specific things. Artists are needed for everything on this planet, from the chair you're sitting in to the house and apartment you're living in, to the bike you ride, to the car you drive, to the utensils you eat from, is all artists created, all right? It's still going to need to be done. Um, and I, I believe eventually you're going to be guided into what it is you want to do. Uh, let me say, uh, I think it'll benefit artists right now. And I thought if they're using it right now before everyone gets wind of this, right? Truly, it's like, you got that job you got to do. You got that deadline. Oh my God, I got to provide them with 20 ideas. And I've just run out of things to think about. You could put punch in some sort of prompt and go, wow, that was interesting. Never thought about doing a hamster in a space outfit with that shape before, right? And it created, and not that it stole from other artists. Again, I'm still researching this and you guys, we can have discussion, but I've heard two different things. One, that it is sourcing from artists and there are some of those AI programs which are absolutely taking from other people's and matching. And there's other where it's just grabbing shapes and there's actually no physical image that belongs to any specific designer um, work. Again, I'm, I'm hearing back and forth on this, but maybe you guys might have some more insight into that. Um, let me see. Uh, you go. Okay. All right. So with that said, let's, let's share my screen here. I want to just show you uh, some things here. 
All right, and uh, let me get into this. Okay, so here, this was an interesting um, article that I found. It's my first attempt of creating AI generating using MidJourney. So MidJourney, for those of you guys who don't know this, I mean, there's a lot of them out there, but MidJourney right now seems to be the one that's really sort of hitting some amazing stuff and, and pulling some really rendered um, ideas through there. And there's another one, which is called stable diffusion, where that way you're kind of fueling it, you're feeding it the idea. So you might take 50 designs of a specific person and throw it in there and it's generating. So some artists are doing it where of their own artwork just to help them in creation of brand new ideas to help them through that uh, artist block that you get. So this is going to solve a lot of artist block, in, in my opinion. Again, so don't, you got to embrace it. Don't resist this. This is happening. All right. But here, I just want to show with you just some, you know, just different prompts. Again, just for those of you guys that may be not too familiar. So this was um, a mid-journey prompt, a house in space. That's all that was written, a house in space. But all of a sudden, it gives you a little outlook, a little idea. <laughs> Again, is it Perfect is it laid out, but no, someone can turn that into uh, something if they want. But again, it generates an idea for you, you know, a car with wings. Okay, it could be a car, but it, even I'm just seeing just different color patterns. You know, I mean, those wings are pretty lame. I don't know that I'd place wings there, but again, it pr prompts an idea. Um, a house in the middle of the Milky Way. Okay, you know, again, this is spawning when you, if you're just starting a seed of an idea, this is what you're going to do anyway. If I was having to do this manually before AI, not only am I going to look at a house, I might even name a specific sort of house. I might say it's an old Tudor house. I might say it's a Spanish style house. I might say it's a, a, a modern house. And then I'm going to grab houses and use all these pictures out there. And then I'm going to grab images of the Milky Way, all those images that are already on the internet, I'm going to grab those and use those and start mashing these things together, right, just with my own brain. Look at this, a turtle riding a bike. You know, so really, I mean, there's some messed up bikes looking there. But again, it's the idea. And even this one on the top left, that's kind of a funny, interesting idea. Again, there's going to be that artist and those people who choose to just literally steal. I don't even want to say steal is the word. This is where people are resisting all this. It's stealing someone else's artwork. Well, can you actually pinpoint whose artwork that is? I don't know. Again, I don't know if this is just grab some crazy shapes of what, what it's done here. But there is an interesting idea there to where maybe I might have never thought about that. And all of a sudden, you know, now I'm creating a, a character you know, through here, but this becomes, you know, some little kids, you know, kind of helmet, you know, through there has kind of got a turtle helmet that I wasn't even thinking about a turtle helmet on someone's head before. And now this guy's got this whole turtle, you know, on his head again, it prompted an idea. It spawned something for me. This is, you know, a zombie in the city of New York, photorealistic. Okay. Again, it may, might even just give you some compositional um, ideas. This was used in the name of Bob Ross to create images in his own style, uh, painting of just uh, a road. Okay. Is that really a Bob Ross? No, Bob Ross has never created that. It is, doesn't really look like a Bob Ross to me, but okay, that's, that's fine. All right. A humanoid futuristic robot in New York. So even here, there's so many abstract things going on here to where you can use this idea to where maybe, again, I didn't even, you know, think about all oh, that idea of this sort of like TV screen happening within that face and adding these different elements. And maybe, again, I'm just going to start to use these and use it as a shape language tool, right, to where I can just start to build these different ideas and maybe pull like we do anyway. I'm pulling from all different designs here. Maybe I'm seeing I like the way those shoulders are. So there is a sort of kit bashing aspect that's kind of happening as you're generating that right so using this to your advantage um this one's really interesting to me um isometric diorama of a caribbean pirate uh archipelago thriving pirate city port in the style of civilization six you know blah 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 but look at i mean that's kind of kind of laid out some great perspective for you again when you get into all the details you, you'd have to fix all those and this way i'm saying art directors where there's going to be skeleton schools where uh, where in get the gaming industry i think is going to be affected the first is going to be the major industry that will get 
affected into skeleton screw a, uh, crew aspect. I keep saying skeleton screw, you know, maybe there's some something there, people getting screwed out of jobs. Um, but look at that information that's there that would be a launching point for you in a design. And this, this one with a broccoli haircut, all right. Interesting, right? Interesting concept, just mixing that. Maybe you wouldn't have thought about the placement and it can help you uh, with your placement there. All right, so that was one thing that I wanna share. The next thing is, this is like mid-journey. This is where I see, you know, again, there's dangers in this small publishing house. This I put in a prompt, and this was, I was doing it with the, the uh, uh, girl who introduced me to this. Uh, she shared, and she we did a live Zoom session, and we were doing some prompts. And I said, you know, put in Ro Norman Rockwell baseball player. You know, what is this? And she showed me, I'm like, holy shit. You know, it's just like, you know, there's a lot of drawing problems, right? It messes up the hands, it messes up things, but that's going to change and it's going to evolve. But imagine you're a non-artist and you've just written a book on baseball players um, and you just want to illustrate a book and you have a whole writing that, yeah, do I need to necessarily hire that uh, illustrator to do Norman Rockwell style baseball players? No, but, you know, do you just want to, get this and maybe hire an artist to just fix certain things. If you're not an artist, you could do that if you wanted to, and people will, they're going to hire artists to fix drawing problems. This is again, I'm just saying what's going to happen. I'm not beating around the bush here, um, but you could fill up a whole book of illustrations of these and go there. They're, and now again, according to AI, you own it. This was your imagination. You created this. I've been reading about the copyrights. Technically you can't copyright, these images that AI, because a human did create it, but I can promise you those laws are going to change. Congress is going to get involved. Uh, new, so much stuff's happening. Again, we're in a, an evolution and we got to evolve or we die if we don't evolve. All right. Look at these, these Count Draculas, all right, drawn in, in these different, just di different styles. But where what I'm saying is, again, there's a lot of messed up. So some people may just say, hey, I want that as a print, even though the eyes are all messed up. They just love the abstraction of it. But what if you just kind of like taking this design now and you're kind of getting that idea of, you know, what this character, but you're using your knowledge of just design and drawing. And now you're just starting to maybe fix things and just draw things in here. Again, I can come in and start to take that. And what this did was just spawn a new idea just to help me get somewhere and create a brand new design. Again, fix all the drawing problems, but I'm getting to see all these different shapes that are happening. I'm not sure what the prompt was for this one. Uh, she had sent these uh, to me that she did. But again, you look at this. These are four different concepts of a forest in snow time um, and with, with the sunset lighting, right? So that was almost like the prompt. So again, you can start that. You can evolve this. You could do something else with it. Start generating these ideas. This prompt was I put in steampunk anime style with Superman colors. Right. That was like the prompt in here. It generated. Are you going to be able to find any one specific artwork that actually did that? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I From what I understand, I don't believe so. All right. But it's grabbing so many things. But again, it's sparking idea for color combinations that maybe you struggle with color combinations. So, again, if we embrace this as a tool. This and stop worrying about it's going to steal our jobs and it's going to take away from us and stop being in that way. It's not going to change anything. It's not going to do anything. That shit's going to happen. And just know that's going to happen. Look at this one. This was a graphite, draw a horse in a graphite style, graphite pencil. Someone could take this and make a print out of it and go to a fair in you know, some little small town, a street fair, and start selling prints of all their horses. And in their mind, hey, I created this. That's what it's going to be. I created this. I punched in the prompt. So it's my creation. And they're going to be able to sell that as prints. They're going to be able to take that, put that on t-shirts. So this for entrepreneurs, I'm telling you, you are going to see a boom. As much of a boom that you saw in the app building business when people started to understand how to build their own apps and make their own apps. And it just boomed into this whole industry. And that's, what, that's what's going to happen. Look at this sort of background with waterfall out in sort of like sunset, you know, pretty, pretty good. There's, you know, again, a lot of things you might need to fix, but some interesting color choices. This was this frog done in Bobby Chu style. 
All right. So it created, you know, went into him. But is this Bobby Chu? No, I don't think it's a Bobby Chu, but it's a cool like illustration. But again, look, there's, the hands need to be fixed. They even added these extra eyes, but it's kind of interesting. There's something interesting. Again, my, look at the shape language. Look at the, the skinnier frogs to the bigger frogs, right? It's just um, adapting this. This was um, drawing a pirate, right? So where, where have all these pirates? I don't know. It, it, it just mashed together hundreds of different things but if all of a sudden i'm designing a pirate well maybe i might just be designing my idea of this pirate and just wanting just to have fun but i oh man that's a great idea for that mustache that beard that i didn't even think about this is what everyone's been doing forever in animation in every facet from advertising all around where we've always been stealing you know in a way if you want to use that from other people's uh, artwork and music and everything else, but I take that and I can start to, again, just build this idea. It could be my own personal drawing. Maybe I like the idea that there's those couple things, you know, through there. And I can start to design this whole different character and get get an idea for them just based on that. So that's where it can start to inspire you with new shapes, new orders, uh, new distances. Look at this asset more for like the gaming industry, right? If you're creating, this was a cabin in the woods with a fireplace. Look at all, that was just four different generations, four different ideas that this would work as an asset for when you're doing uh, game design, right? Again, just generated a new angle that you didn't even think of. It's helping you with your perspective. Um, again, this is, look what SketchUp does that people are using all the time. Is that cheating? where they're just creating the by punching in so certain things and they're generating using all these tools to create buildings and angles that they didn't physically draw in the beginning, but now they're using it and they do an overlay on top of it and start to build from that, right? So we got to think about what we're saying when we're saying that this is a tool that's against us. Uh, look at these, these would fact say putting in Trump, you know, again, just very recognizable caricature, but actually that one on the bottom left and that one on the top right looks pretty good good you know this one is very crazy on, on the left but there's these ideas look at this trump in a pencil line sort of sketch didn't nail it you know ink line you know a lot of drawing problems but can inspire these brand new ideas all right that was just a close-up of that one through there again another background sort of concept design look at this one uh a tennis shoe uh, drawn, uh, hold on, Matt, if you just hold on your two questions, uh, just a second. Um, just look at this tennis shoe, uh, uh, a tennis shoe drawn with Iron Man influence. That was it. So tell me that the shoe industry, that Nike and everyone else isn't going to start using AI to get, get the, these designers and these developers aren't going to use that to, hey, we need to do tennis shoes with Iron Man theme, with the Superman theme. All right. So this stuff's going to happen. Look at this one, which this was on mid journey, again, creating an amazing art piece that no one can take ownership to that. It's just done in a whole different style, creating a whole new look through there. Okay. So those are those I'm almost done here and we'll open it up uh, to discussion, but I want to just show you some more stuff. Okay. So uh, let me just go um, here. <laughs> I don't have mid journey, but someone else did and sort of like punched in Steven silver uh, style through there, but these are some of the things that, you know, showed up through there. Uh, I don't know. I don't see it, but I, I see that could, again, potentially be ideas that are coming through there. And part of me does, like, I do feel like in some of my portfolio pieces, I've seen the body shape to where I, I feel, yeah, this has pulled certain things from me of designs that I have done um, and sizes. But on, uh, you know, again, when you just sort of like look at this and you're taking that character, like I'm looking at this character on the far left through there, you got this idea where again, I'm sort of like building that. And then from here, I can just start to change and just add just a, a little bit more of maybe a style or something that I, you know, want to do. And again, it's sort of like generated this idea, which I may have never sort of thought about if I had to draw this uh, old man professor, you know, or something and, and do something like that, right? So it could, um, again, launch these different ideas. Here was some more someone punched in Steven Silver style with a black and white line. Again, that's not my drawings. None of those are my drawings. 
it's botched. It's, it's, you know, there's interesting things going on in there, but it's not there. Some more sort of like the Steven Silver style. Again, it can auto generate these ideas. This is what happened when I punched it in, in a, in a program, which used to be called uh, Dolly, uh, which is now crayon.com. And I just put in old man faces, but it just showed me photographs, but I, you know, I, I saw some interesting, um, you know, stuff from there. I, I like those faces. Those, those are interesting faces to draw, like Earth's World. We use Earth's World, you know, to draw and find reference for. So I just kind of like had pulled that one. You guys may have seen that on my social media, where, again, I was just like using that as influence uh, to help get me there. Um, this was like a Jack Davis style, old man Jack Davis style. Again, what the? fuck is this? It's just like, it's all over the place. I don't know what the hell that is, but there could potentially be ideas. Even this, this, I don't remember what I put in for the prompts. I think just old man drawing. Um, and I kind of meant it to say like, with just like a pencil drawing, but I look at it and I go, you know, I'm looking at this guy, you know, right here, there's almost like a Ronald Searle, um, aspect to it. Uh, some other things, but there's some interesting, you know, shapes that can really kind of happen through there that maybe you weren't thinking about that all of a sudden, again, now it just kind of prompted this idea just to help me um, with a character. And then I can create just a brand new character, but maybe I wasn't thinking about taking someone's body shape uh, down like that and really dropping that down again. I can do anything sort of afterwards with that. Um, and that's why I like this crayon.com. Because what I've had, these were interesting. Uh, let me blow these up just a bit. Hold on uh, for you guys to see just a little bit better. These were just old man fishermen, Norman Rockwell. There's like a Norman Rockwell feel, you know, in there. But again, just, you know, I, Mid Journey could probably do a better job, but I'm just looking at these and going, well, wow, there's some interesting ideas. There's some interesting concepts. You know, I'm looking at this guy's face. I like this guy's face and the way that his, uh, his, his beard is sort of broken into that uh, area through there. And we got this guy's nose and that shape, you know, and his, we got his mouth through there and his little tiny eyes. Again, I could just do something like that and, and bring this. And again, all of a sudden just start to build up my own design and my own character based on something that's happening there. So that was really interesting. This was like a panda in a police uniform. Right. Look at look at these uh, with that pen and a police. Uh, you know, again, some interesting concepts, maybe nothing to read, nothing you're going to put on print, nothing a studio is going to use um, at this point. These were um, a portrait um, of a cute little pumpkin creature, huge insect like eyes, symmetry, 3D render, attention to detail. Again, depends on what you put in for the prompt, but some interesting concepts, you know, happening through there. This was. Um, a panda in a Kim Possible style. I think that's a big fail. <laughs> it's just like, this is brutal, brutal uh, what's going on. But some interesting shapes, you know, what I can say, I like the, uh, when I look at this, I like this idea of this panda and this sort of like big panda through here. So maybe you got that panda. And I like the way that the, the face shape is just kind of broken up through there. Again, I might sort of like implement, you know, a, a character you know, it shapes through there and start to, you know, make up whatever that that style is and play with that proportion, you know, through there. So again, it, it gave me this launching point um, for a design style and a, and a, and a look. Um, almost done here. Let's see a, this was uh, <laughs> old man faces in a Danny Phantom style. Well, that completely butchered it. And I don't know what the hell's going on with there, but some really fascinating shape generations i'm even looking at this one you know down here where it's almost got like a phineas and ferb uh sort of look but again it could be a potential for maybe just creating um a character through here you know that you want to design and then maybe i could just add and create something you know completely different you know through there and just start to build upon it once again maybe i would have never thought about doing something like that and now it generated this brand new idea uh for me from there so that was that one um this was just old man faces in cartoon network style sorry uh with these again just maybe some face shapes you see some interesting shapes this was interesting like when i saw this what inspired me i just put in like you know heavy set woman in a superman outfit i can see a lot of alex ross um some stuff alex ross stuff pulled from here but 
what it ended up doing for me. It just inspired me to where I ended up drawing this character, you know, just based off of what I was seeing there. I was just having fun. Um, I wasn't even looking at the reference or anything of those anymore. I'm just like, I'm just going to design just this same sort of philosophy I did, you know, didn't draw in a Superman outfit. But again, it spawned an idea that that led to something. Here was an astronaut pig floating in space. <laughs> you know, I mean, again, is, what is that? It's not a pig. I don't know what it is, but you can combine things there and potentially just start to um, add to it and use your own imagination um let me see what else here this was just a old homeless guy running holding a pie in a cartoon style i mean nothing really there but again maybe some interesting shapes and then here this was like a, a hamster uh, a hamster biker i wrote but it didn't give me what i wanted but again a lot of just you know when i do those blind feeling sketches we do those that's what this is to me this is like using blind feeling to sort of help you get brand new ideas and and shapes that can happen but so that was kind of what i wanted to um let me just grab my uh stop the share here um just give you i just wanted to get that out just show you where i'm coming from show you examples and really just have this open up a discussion of just what you guys are thinking, what your guys' thoughts are about this, and uh, maybe any insight uh, you could add to that. So I see, Matt, you got your hand raised first, so uh, go ahead. Well, I've constructed three statements. First one is a, I request that I have access to all those uh, images you showed us, because I need to look at those again. They're too good. The second one is I was trying to think about this the other day when talking about the AI is that I genuinely enjoy it where you go through Google who tries to take all these sources and images and bring it down to keywords. Then you look at something like Pinterest where it's also like it's based on people's interests and selection. You look at something like AI that does both of them, but tries to condense them into singular or if not a pair of images. So I kind of like the AI for the sake that it lets me see what I intend to see rather than having to go through who's done what, what is what. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The third one is a statement I wanted to say last week when we first started talking about this, both in the way the AI functions to also our personal use about this. It's a quote, any fool can know. What's important is that we understand. Albert Einstein. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's it. We got thanks. thanks, Matt. All right, uh, go ahead, Julie. Hello. Hello. So, um, I, I know I've shared a few things with you. Um, the things I wanted to bring up about AI, it's not like AI is new. From the minute we had a cell phone, we've been using AI from you know digital watches that used to do lap counting, that's technically AI. I think people, because it's in so many more applications, people are worried about it. The other thing too is to think about, maybe it's replacing a traditional form of things, but it's not dawn of the machines in the sense of, it can replace because people still need to be inputting and prompting and, and working on. So it, it creates different jobs, maybe not the same job. So maybe artists are viewed differently. And, and that's something that as an artist, you have to embrace because, you know, we don't paint on cave walls anymore with ground up stone. It's, it's just a new tool. Um, and, and I think so, I can't speak for all of the, AIs out there. I'm most familiar with mid-journey. And so a common workflow is to start in mid-journey and then put it in stable diffusion because stable diffusion does a nice job with like polish. But uh, mid-journey, for example, it's open API. And so it's not actually just pulling pieces. It's not like a magazine where you're ripping up pieces of pictures and collaging them. It actually takes every image, maps it to a data set. So it's it's kind of taking pictures, turning them into numbers, you know, ones and zeros, and then it creates these massive data sets. So when you ask for your old man drawing, did you want an old man comma drawing? or a drawing of an old man, right? And so it, it does, so it looks, at, it looks at all of that information and pulls out um, based on some of it. Some of it looks the same as like you ripped up a magazine, you know, like different right. styles when you're asking for different artists. But um, the funny thing you mentioned is like, oh, Nike will start using this. Nike already, Nike already uses AI. They were one of the first to start doing their um, commercials as JavaScript. So creative coders became, you have guys who code, guys and girls who code 
uh, men and women. Um, and they are now artists because they write JavaScript to create imagery. And so that also the whole like, oh, it's not created by a human. Technically copyright is once it's in a tangible form. So it doesn't matter the tool you use when you put an idea into a tangible form. Um, but Nike was one of the first, Bruno, I think Bruno Imbruzzi is his name. He was one of the, he's like one of the big dogs of, of doing of JavaScript as imagery, which you don't think of, you know, but somehow that was more palatable to people maybe because it didn't seem as artistically like in your face as these are. And it didn't seem like there was as much room for copying. I think, you know, yeah, there's always gonna be people out there cheating and copying and, you know, that's gonna come out in the wash eventually, but why not use it like you said, as for me, for someone who works a different day job and then wants to have time to do stuff and draw and be an artist, if I can create 20 prompts and look at them and be like, oh yeah, that's that's the, that matches the idea I have in my head, you know, it gets that idea out. I mentioned last week, this opens the door for people who physically cannot pick up a pencil or a paper. Um, you know, so why should those, where, where does it, where does the creation start? If you see a picture in your head and you have no physical way to make it into some other form, does that mean you're not an artist? Mm, I don't know. That's, that's a whole nother discussion. So just a question more or less, but um, I think it's an interesting thing to play with. And I, it's, some of the results are just downright hilarious too. I shared a couple with you yeah. where I was like, I, I don't even know what this is. Like, right what yeah um so it is it is kind of interesting but i'm really glad that you're opening this and that people are exploring it and and talking about it and seeing what it can do and what its limitations are yeah absolutely uh thanks so much julie for sharing that i also just want to mention again we got to think about just the general public too the majority of general public whenever you tell them i was just at a, a friend's giving the other day, the day and i was talking to uh, a guy that i've known for a while is not an artist. He works in insurance, but it, you know, he's talking about, yeah, you know, like CG, right? You just you just push a button, right? I mean, do you even need artists anymore? You know, that's you just like hitting a button, and that's that's people's mentality. That's people think that that's what you do anyway. So with this, again, it's just they they're just gonna keep thinking that way. And with this one, yeah, you got to have your imagination. You know, you got to think of the the prompt. Many of you guys may have heard about that guy. There was a lot of controversy about that guy that won that art competition. You know, he entered uh, Mid Journey piece. And there's like called the science opera or something like that and won $300, you know, in the art competition and outbeat everyone else. And he was just saying, hey, man, I, you know how much work this took? I had like 800 prompts and I had all these ideas and I had to keep fine tuning it and doing all that. Why is that any different for me? taking like the movie industry does a lot of times is just taking photographs and just adding them to my painting and my background, right? And incorporating that into my design or why is this different from just taking a photo, an actual photograph? Does, does anyone really own nature? Can you, you know, just cause you framed it, you know, there's so there's, everyone's going back and forth, but this is why I'm just like, slow down everyone just kind of pull the reins back just know that this is the world we're living in now this again like uh, julie's saying too ai has been around for a long time it's gonna help us it could be the detriment of us who knows again it could be the terminator coming our way and we don't even realize it yet you know so that could be happening i don't know but this is where i always like to say live for the present and be present stay here now just embrace this now don't worry about what it's going to do two years from now five years oh my god i'm going to lose my job in five years that's five years don't worry about that and things are going to evolve from that point right so it's always changing all right let's go to dan and then we'll go to yvonne go ahead dan hey silver how are you good good uh i the more the more I get involved with art, the more I think of it as a language and I'm, I'm learning a way to show you my imagination. And uh, this is almost like somebody invented a, a new translator. Like it's already been on its way, you know, like with uh, digital stuff, just in general, the, the question has always been, Oh, are you still making it? Are you still, are you still making the art? But it, uh, I feel like it's like you said, it's a, a new jumping off point and it's going to bring the floor up for other people. The people who don't draw ever are going to be able to communicate their imagination to us now. 
And then we obviously are going to be able to use that and then jump off from there. And uh, I actually, I was in uh, Colombia for work just now. I just got back last night and uh, I don't speak much Spanish, but that was the first place I've been to that they literally are like, oh, you don't speak Spanish? Sorry, goodbye. And they're like, they just don't baby you at all. So I was using my translator a ton. And because of that, I feel like I learned so much Spanish because I had to do some homework on it. Um, and I feel like this is really similar, like art really, the more I learn, the more I go, wow, it really is a language. It really is. And I also do feel that this is going to help, you know, I don't know about you guys, but how many people you've worked with in your life that are trying to communicate an idea to you, but just don't, they're non-artists and they're just trying to, you know, it's just like, a, um, you know, like, like a house in the woods and then there's a, a, a fire in front of it and it's just, I mean, you know what I mean? You know, it's like now they're going to be able to, an art director, in all honesty, is going to be able to possibly produce something or uh, an executive or someone else or, for, and, and more companies will probably come from this. Look what happened during the pandemic because of Zoom and, and everything. And look at the technology that, that was innovated during the pandemic. All these new businesses were formed out of this. And that's what's going to happen with this. There's going to be so many new businesses coming, which are probably going to just end up having to employ more artists anyway to fix these certain things. But they just have a grander idea of like what to do with it. Hey, we could take this image and do something, but we need someone to fix it. So job opportunities, I, I believe, are going to come from it. But we've got to take all that into consideration. All right, go ahead, Yvonne. Now, you introduced these this new AI thing to us. I don't know how long it's been out, but do we have to... A do the AI thing, or can we <laughs> no. stick with doing the basic traditional thing, the no. computer yeah. thing that we do? No, oh. you you do your own thing. It's just it's just another tool. It's like some people choose to draw by hand on paper. Some people choose to use Photoshop. Some people choose to use Sketchbook. Some people use Procreate. Some people use AI. It's just another tool. Um, so yeah, you don't you're not going to have to use it. You you just got to be able to. You always have to be able to deliver. A result to your client that's your bottom line however you so do it's it. just, just another thing that you can do to get in but you don't have to do it just for some of those other people to do but you don't have to do it yeah right. and i there's trust me there's going to be artists out there who are going to take this technology and they're going to build bullshit portfolios there you and i'm saying that not that they didn't create it and imagine it but they're going to generate bullshit portfolios showing all this artwork that they did technically and it might you know of, of some really great artwork and uh and it's going to get to the point where right now you can see like a mid-journey uh ai thing but there's going to be a time where it's you're not going to be able to and the people are going to get hired and they're going to realize that you know, when they have more specific ideas that they need and the AI is not generating it, then they're going to be in trouble and they're going to be called out and they're going to lose their jobs. There's going to be people who are going to be setting up Instagram accounts who are going to be sort of like saying that I did this, you know, right. Again, you did, it was your prompt, but they're going to try to mislead people to say that this was, I actually painted it and used my hand. And I think that's where a lot of artists get sensitive about it because they're like, I've spent, 25 years trying to develop my skill set and learn this and now it's doing it in seconds it's just not fair again how do you how are you going to perceive it what are you going to do with it i look at it as a great tool right now for artists who are especially even working in the industry just to get a bunch of new ideas without sitting there because you guys know how hard it can be sometimes when you max out your ideas and your shape language and you're just like oh. I just don't know where else to look anymore. I don't know what else to do, right? And then you keep digging for reference. God, let me try to find some other reference. I need more tiger reference. I need more of this reference. And always, our whole lives, artists have been pulling from reference. And now it's just doing it in such a way that can help That can help us. So use it. Don't deny it. That That's the thing. But it seemed like some of the pictures we've seen were un unrecognizable, like the pigs were unrecognizable oh, yeah, and yeah. the pandas were unrecognizable you can tell that it was kim possible on the panda but the panda was unrecognizable yeah, yeah. kim looked un unrecognizable too yeah, yeah. maybe to let you know that he wasn't actually copying you but yeah. he was doing his own thing with kim possible you know 
Yeah, it's 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 fascinating. Yeah, yeah it's going to be interesting. Just uh, again, use it. So that's why I like the crayon dot uh, com just because it sort of messes it up so much to where it's like I, I think that and then I got to peel away at it and try to find something in there but again what it did for me is it's inspired me just to start drawing uh, just other stuff that I would have never drawn before and, and I like it for that for that reason all right thanks Yvonne um, does anyone else want to chime in here and uh, give any of their thoughts behind it? Is anyone on the other side here? Again, this is a be this is a beautiful community where we get to share our voice. Is anyone on the other side that feels like this is going to be a horrible thing and that you don't you don't like AI? Because I everyone I I just finished doing a workshop just before I started this, and one of the questions was, "What side of the fence are you on with AI?" So now here we are again, picking sides, you know, what side are you on? It's just like, why do we got to be on different sides? Why do we got to fight? Why are we going to fight amongst ourselves, you know, with this? I can see it coming. It's going to happen, but I think we've got to have these discussions. Go ahead, Luke. Hey, good afternoon, Stephen. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, thanks for introducing us to this um tool. Actually, I ran into this recently where a friend of mine, for her herself and her mom, she wanted me to design 12 different cats, um, you know, for um, app appliques, I think, like quilting. And so, um, you know, I mean, there's tons of different cats out there. So I, I Googled cat breeds and, I, and there's the calico cat. There's the American short hair. And I got hit with the artist block like a lot. <laughs> and then I started to try to get these like identities like, OK, an alley cat catfish as a mermaid and you know for all of my <laughs> quote-unquote creativity I, I i couldn't do the assignment so i guess for homework i'm gonna actually have a shot take a shot at this tool and see what i can come up with and then bring it back to whatever style i think that these can all kind of hang around in and I'll, and I'll share my results yeah that'd be great and love to see it please share it in the community i would love i to will but this is a prime example of right now getting in early with this to where you have this client who's probably not never going to just get the app and get a uh, uh, mid journey, probably knows nothing about it and is asking you for these variations to where it's going to generate work for artists where now you can maybe, oh, I, I can do that very easily. Again, then you put your own spin on it if you want to. You can change it. Like, again, for me, I'm not a painter. I use line. So I know for me using it, anything that I do get inspired by, I'm just going to end up turning it into a stylized line anyway. It's just going to be a form of inspiration. And like Matt was saying, it's just you kind of instead of having to go to this site and this site and grabbing all these different things, it's kind of like put it all into one area um, and mixing what's in your head already. Um, so again, helpful tool. Thanks, Luke. Um, go ahead, Julie. And then we'll do Sean next. Just a, a quick, um, you said why, uh, you know, who's on the other side and I, I don't know that I'm on any side and I don't think we need to polarize like yeah. why, like you said, why bother? Why do we need to have a side? I'm thinking of this more in the terms of like um, right now it's captivated my interests and attention and I'm having fun with it and I'm playing with it and experimenting and pushing the boundaries. What can I do with it? Which maybe I'll lose interest. Maybe I won't the same way you know I tried oil painting and I have to be about the world's worst mm -hmm. oil painter I will not share any examples because they are horrific you know and it's like that where it's like certain artists gravitate towards certain things so maybe this is one that some people will or won't and I'm not going to worry about the mischief people get up to because then I'm worrying is praying for what you don't want right and so I, I just think that maybe it's a case of it might not be for everybody and that's okay. It's I'm not going to try to convince anyone that they have to use it, but I do want to like you kind of say, Hey, don't ignore it though. Cause it's not going to go away. Exactly. So that was just one right. only little. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. All right, go ahead, Sean. Thanks. Okay. So I, I wanted to look at this from a couple of other angles. So yeah. I work as a freelancer. I've done it for about a decade and a half is my only job. Um, and, uh, I played a little experiment with one of these. And what I did was to try to get myself totally outside of my own head is I, I used your character shuffle app, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's how I, I wanted to build a prompt, right? So that way I was kind of hands off. Before I put it in, 
I drew the prompt myself. Okay. So what I thought I would do with it. And I tried to give it a little bit of a point. So the shuffle I had gotten was something like male dragon hacker. And um, the uh, and I and I had locked some of the others and I had unlocked an expression and it was or I unlocked all the expressions to pick one and I picked one that was angry. Okay. So here's what I did first. First, I imagined to myself if I was being asked to draw something like this, why would I be asked to be drawing something? So I made a quick little illustration of this angry uh, hacker dragon next to a laptop that he had tried to blast but couldn't get through the firewall and so i made like a little firewall cybersecurity ad do you kind of get what i'm yeah. where i'm going out with this i was trying to imagine who would hire me to do something like this and i did it after that then i i went to one of these um I, i'm trying to remember what the name of it was it was a free one you know because i i was yeah just playing with it and i put it in a bunch of times um I didn't really like any of the ones that had come out, but here's the more important thing. It had a really hard time understanding. I, I'd, put, I'd given it even extra words. So I'd put in, you know, the laptop and the table and all of this stuff. It had a really hard time understanding what I wanted it to do, even, even in another person's style, right? Like it just had a hard time grasping the concept. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. It did though, show me some things that I thought, oh, hey, that's kind of a cool dragon feature or something. Um, so there, there were some benefits there, but in general, it was still pretty different. And I'm, I'm sharing that as my first point as to like, hey, if you do this, there are a lot of reasons why what you have to offer as, your, as yourself is so valuable and, and so good. And if somebody finds a way, look, there, there, there are like hundreds of thousands, maybe, maybe millions worldwide artists who are available for hire from other countries who might be much cheaper than you are or, or, or this or that other. There, there's a million reasons for somebody to pick somebody other than you, but there are a million reasons to pick you. So, so, so don't, don't quit believing in what you do and how you do it. There are a million people better, a million people who wish they were as good. Just keep trying and keep going your way with it. There's, you know, this thing could be a really cool way to get your your creativity going. Yeah. The other one was is one of the things that you mentioned at the beginning that's really been a challenge to me lately is you were talking about the people who will use this to say make their own products to sell through print on demand, um, you know, KDP, all of those kinds of things. And uh, when the KDP thing first started getting pretty big a couple of years ago, um, I had some people offer me these most outrageously cheap jobs that I would never do, but they basically they wanted me to make their coloring books for like $4 a page. I was like, you're insane. You think this is a get rich quick scheme and I'm too stupid to understand it. But then it got me to thinking, what if I wanted to try to make my own coloring book? I mean, is there, is there some money in that? So here's where I'm going with this new AI thing. Like people may want to make uh prints for t-shirts or for, um, you know, like Luke was talking about different kinds of uh, textile patterns, just different kinds of things, all of that stuff. If you have been making money uh, providing that for other people, here's maybe a chance for you to see why you should, you know, take your entrepreneurial ship another step further. If you love making those kinds of patterns, if you love making those kinds of designs, if you like love making those kinds of cartoons, Try to make them for yourself. You're, you're your own generator, yep. you know, and what you have is going to be really great. And you will always make more money if you can find a way to sell those things under your own brand. You talk about that all the time, Stephen, about, you know, doing your own branding, trying to find your own products. So I just, um, you know, whether, you know, whether or not it's kind of scary because it's new this way or that way, the truth is, um, you know, there's all these ways to do it. And one thing that I'll leave it on is this community is a very supportive, kind community, right? And if we weren't always putting that up front, we could see each other as more like competition and 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 feel insecure around one another. Sure, work is competitive in, in a way that we can't avoid. But in the same way, we can be around each other, brilliant, wonderful artists doing beautiful work. And we're not afraid of each other, right? We're supporting each other. So um, this other thing that might feel kind of cold and calculating and robotic and, and don't fear it either. Even, even if you feel like, hey, no, this is beautiful. This is giving it people the chance you either don't have the uh, physical capacity to draw or maybe the talent to draw either, whatever. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Like we're going to be okay. You, you, you've always faced this much competition all along. Yeah. Don't, don't think that you haven't. You're okay.
That's it. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing all that. Again, it's just so, so important just to have that. I think that's the, it's the right mindset, you know, all bit generally speaking with this. Um, and I am fascinated just hearing more and I would encourage you guys to keep educating yourself about it. Keep listening to other podcasts, any YouTube channels, anything that you can find where people are talking about it, just to hear their perspective um about it and, and what's going on but again it's, it's not going away it's here to stay it's going to keep getting better people think oh well it messes up hands and stuff right now yeah today you know in a year from now it won't it, it's going to be really good and it's going to be doing some great things um but yeah use it to your advantage um and that's what we can do is just anything in life just use these things that are on this planet for us as tools just to help us. And if you are, and it, this, I think this is going to be an on because art is everything. It really is. And even in the, the hard times in life, when during the great depression and everything, people, music and art was still flourishing at those moments. And it's something that people are going to always be embracing and are going to always need. Art is not going anywhere. And as long as there's humans on this planet, you know, we need it. We all got it hanging in our walls, in our rooms. We all buy products. We all, there's, there's so many uses for it. This, this is going to help save you time. And the most precious thing, and that's what I like about this too, is it's a time saver and can be that. That's the one thing we want more than anything in this world is time. I wish I had more time, right? That's what we're all aiming for. We don't want to be working for other people the rest of our lives and never having time for our family or friends because we're working, we're working, we're working, working. Now, I can, I'm, there's going to be artists who are going to do this right and are going to be able to cut all their time in half, right? Is it going to replace... Um, are you going to be able to animate full on scenes and just plug in and say, I want to have a dancing bear doing this and that maybe not right now. It's not possible right now. It can't generate the same image twice. So you're always going to be getting a brand new image every single time. But who's to say that it won't start doing that and that it won't be the push of a button at some point. I, I don't know, yeah, but I can just see it coming. Listen, there's a lot of innovation and invention happening all the time. Just let's, um, let's just keep learning about it. Let's keep talking about it. Let's use it, not fight it. Don't resist it, embrace it and uh, see what magic you can kind of create. See what new business idea you can create from it, right? This is an opportunity. I was, I won't share it with you guys right now, just because it's something that um, I'm going to work. Uh, I was telling my brother about who's in the entertainment industry, but I'm seeing a whole new thing for this, for the general public in an entertainment party style thing that could go on. You know, I'm just like, you're just like, God, this can happen and that can happen. I mean, my, my brain was going 50 million miles an hour of just inventions, innovation that can happen with this. And, and I love the fact that AI is here. But I was, like I mentioned, I was talking to this guy who um, is the CEO of just the health of the hospital doing with cancer research. And he was just saying what AI is helping them with right now, where they're breaking through, where they're going to be able to track every time that they're going to be able to know what maybe um, every time we gave people two aspirin over the last 20 years, it did this to them after they went through that surgery. So we know now we got all this data, which is going to show us exactly what the consequence is of giving someone two aspirin or just one aspirin and show that, oh, this kind of kept happening to more than 50% of people. So now we have an understanding of, okay, maybe we shouldn't give that person three aspirin, whatever it may be. It's going to start gathering that data like it already does with everything else that we use today. Um, again, AI, you know, it's been around forever. Um, it's just getting better and better. But um, anyway, hopefully today this sort of like opened up some of your guys' eyes and just gave you some new insight and um, just, just uh, you know, embrace it, learn from it and see where it can take you. All right. Um, I don't see any other hands raised or any other questions, but uh, this is recorded. So if you guys do want to see those images again, just go to the, when I post it, you guys will be able to look at those images again. And um, yeah, thanks for showing up today and uh, seeing this. And uh, the next artist hangout will be uh, next week, next Wednesday on the 30th. All right. So hopefully you guys can uh, join in them. So thanks again for showing up today and uh, make it a great day and have a great, happy Thanksgiving and holiday. All right, guys. Okay. See ya.